So let's talk about breastfeeding. I have been wanting to film this video for a long time. I honestly went through a lot of struggle and a lot of things in the early days of breastfeeding and even months down the road. So I feel like maybe some of my experience would be helpful to some of you who are maybe pregnant and are looking to breastfeed or maybe you are breastfeeding and you're struggling. So the first thing I wanna say is if I could go back at the beginning of my breastfeeding journey and tell myself a few things. The first thing it would be is that it is a huge commitment. I feel like with breastfeeding and just having a baby in general, people think of it as this fairy tale life and there are some amazing things about it and honestly breastfeeding is one of the most wonderful things I've ever been able to experience but it's also one of the hardest things I've ever done. Especially before your baby is eating solid foods at all, you are their complete source of food, and it is a huge commitment. Second thing I would tell myself is that it's a learning experience. There are moms out there who had their babies and the baby latched on perfectly and that was it. And there was no pain, there was no latch issues, but I feel like for most moms, there are issues, and for me, there were definitely issues. It is definitely a learning experience, not only for you, but for the baby. You have to learn each other. You have to learn what position is comfortable for you and for the baby and what feels right. So be patient and know that it is a learning experience. And the last thing I would say is ask questions. Ask your mommy friends who have breastfed. Um, ask your mom. My mom breastfed all four of her girls, so I was actually able to get a lot of advice from her and definitely, definitely get in contact with your closest lactation consultant. The one that I had was amazing. I saved her number in my phone and I would text her all hours of the day and she was very helpful to me. Okay, so I wanna talk about the early days of breastfeeding. And this is not professional advice at all. This is just my experience with breastfeeding. I had my son by C-section and I was worried about not being able to breastfeed him and do skin to skin quickly. And surprisingly, I was able to do that very quickly after he was born. It's like they stitched me up, they wrapped him in a blanket, and they rolled me to my room and left me after I had my C-section. It was very quick, but it was actually really good. And so I was able to do skin to skin and was able to breastfeed him. He did not latch correctly. He was off. And um, it didn't hurt at the time, of course, because I was doped up on medicine. But it definitely hurt later, and I had very sore nipples. I had cracked nipples and that was hard. And in the hospital, they were very quick to give me a nipple shield. I have a love-hate relationship with these things. It did help me a lot, but I will say, if you are able to prevent from using this, I would definitely do that. It was honestly hard for me and Bennett to wean off of this because we got so dependent on it. I really wish that the hospital would have worked a little bit more with me on getting Bennett to latch. So if you can, definitely, um, ask your nurses to help you latch correctly instead of using this nipple shield. It's a useful tool, but it's very inconvenient to travel with, and I felt like the weaning off of it was very hard. What I did, if you are using this and you're needing to wean off of it, I would put it on at the beginning of the nursing session, and then once my milk would let down, I would take it off and then get Bennett to latch on and then we were able to just ditch this and that was awesome. I did have to supplement in the very beginning when we were still in the hospital and that's because Bennett had a pretty bad case of jaundice and my milk had not come in yet. Um, I think it came in the night that I got back from the hospital. They were concerned about his bilirubin levels and wanted me to supplement so that we could get those up before he left from the hospital. And when I found out that they wanted to do that, I was devastated just because I really wanted to breastfeed. And I was thinking that, you know, your mind goes to the worst place. I was thinking he's not going to want to breastfeed because he's going to be on the bottle and he's going to like that better and blah, blah, blah. But what they did is they got the smallest little tube and they would put one end of the tube in the small little bottles. Of, I think it was the Infamil formula. They would put one end in there and then one end basically right where my nipple was, like right on top of it. And so then it would latch on and then he would suck and he would be getting that formula, but he would be latched onto me. So it wasn't confusing for him. I thought that was really cool. I'd never heard of that. And it helped because then he didn't get any kind of nipple confusion. My milk ended up coming in, I think that night. 
So he only had to supplement, I think, for maybe 24 hours. So don't freak out if you do have to supplement. There are ways to get around the nipple confusion and things like that. Like most moms, I did struggle with sore nipples in the beginning. And I will say one thing that helped a lot was trying some different positions. The position that we used a lot in the beginning was the football hold and you can Google it. It's basically where you hold them like a football and the front of their face is basically facing straight on your breast. And I think the reason why that worked really well is I was able to see his mouth much more clearly than if he was turned the other way. And it was much easier to make sure that he was getting a good latch. So we used that for a long time. I feel like everything that you can experience with breastfeeding, I pretty much did. I have had mastitis, I've had a clogged duct, um, Bennett had a dairy allergy and it took us a while to figure that out. Um, I've had cracked nipples, I've been bit, I've had sore nipples, I mean anything you can think of. So if you get mastitis, oh, it is of the devil, I hate it. But basically, you definitely will know if you have it. You'll be in a lot of pain, you'll have red streaks, your boob will feel very feverish, you'll almost feel like you have the flu, and when you breastfeed, it is extremely painful. And I'm pretty sure what causes mastitis and a clogged up is if you are not emptying your breast each time um, your baby's nursing. So I would definitely say that in the beginning, you're gonna have an oversupply and you just really need to make sure that you're emptying your breast completely. If that's not your baby emptying it, definitely pump after the sessions. And it's really good to pump anyway after your baby is done breastfeeding because you can kind of store up a little supply in your freezer, that's what I did. But if you get mastitis, they will put you on an antibiotic to get rid of that. And then my only other advice would just be definitely pump after your baby breastfeeds and make sure that your breast is completely empty. I think what I actually ended up doing because I was in so much pain, I was trying to press through and still breastfeed Bennett on that side and for some reason pumping was a little bit less painful than actually breastfeeding him and so I would just pump and then let my husband feed Bennett from the bottle and that way I would get a little bit of a break and I was able to rest really well and get over the mastitis. If you have a clogged duct, um, again just making sure that your baby is completely empty and another way to kind of unclog that duct um, is to do a warm compress like in the shower. What I would do is I would get in the shower and turn it very, very, very hot, as hot as I could stand it, and I would get a rag and get that wet and then put that over my boob. And sometimes I would even put coconut oil on um, before and that way it just kind of opened everything up and then I would get out and nurse Bennett and made sure it was completely empty and that really helped me get over that very quickly. Bennett had a dairy allergy in the early days of breastfeeding. And it took us a while to figure it out. The main reason I knew something was wrong is that he was very, very fussy, very irritable. Um, his diapers were weird, I guess you would say. Normal breast milk poop, TMI, is yellow and it doesn't really have too bad of a smell. And his were green and they did have a smell and you could just definitely tell that he was having a reaction to something. So I got in contact with my lactation consultant and she suggested that it could be a dairy allergy. So basically all I did was just cut dairy out and watched him for about a week and noticed that he was getting a lot better. His diapers were turning to normal. So I had to cut dairy out completely. And what I did was maybe every month or two, I would try to eat a little bit of dairy. I think Thanksgiving was like a month after. So I was able to test out some mashed potatoes and corn casserole things like that and he did have a reaction so then I would just wait another month or two try it again and finally at around seven months old he got over the dairy allergy and that's what happens a lot of times is the baby will just grow out of it I remember thinking is this ever gonna end am I ever gonna be able to eat dairy again you don't realize how much you eat dairy everything has dairy so it was very relieving and so nice when he finally outgrew that. And honestly, you guys, it seems like a distant memory. Now we're at 11 months of breastfeeding and even though it was just a few months ago that we were struggling with that, 
um, it feels like a distant memory. So you can do it. I will tell you what saved me was Ben and Jerry's almond milk ice cream. I was still able to get my ice cream fixed, but it was almond milk and it was non-dairy. A few of our favorite breastfeeding products I want to share with you. First of all, the Honest Company Organic Nipple Balm. I love this stuff. This helped me a lot with the early days of just the sore nipples and things. It's very gentle, very natural. I didn't even have to wash this off before I breastfed, which was nice, so I really enjoyed this. I couldn't find it, but the other thing that I really loved was just the Lansano Lanolin Cream. I'll link it down below. I don't know where mine is, but I use that like crazy. That really, really helped. I would also just use some good old coconut oil. The brand I use is the Spectrum Unrefined, and I would put this on, like I said, if I had a clogged duct or just as nipple cream. I would use that and it really worked well. Something else I used coconut oil for is if I ever pumped and it was a little bit painful, I would put some coconut oil on and then, TMI, but my nipple would just slide in much easier and it would be a little bit less painful. So kind of as a lubricant almost. I know this is kind of strange, but my lactation consultant told me when I was dealing with even mastitis and just I had a cracked nipple one time and it was very, very painful. Um, she told me to use Lotrimin. I'm pretty sure that this is actually for athlete's foot. And of course you do want to wash it off before you breastfeed, but this seriously helped a lot with healing any kind of sore. I also have recently been bit by my son when he was nursing and teething. So, I used this and it helped a lot to heal that much quicker. One of the things that helped me heal as far as cracked and sore nipples in the very beginning, aside from all the nipple balms and everything else, probably the number one thing that works is breast milk. After Bennett would nurse, I would just hand express a little bit and allow some of that breast milk to stay on my nipple. I would let them air dry and that healed my nipples a lot. I have the um, electronic Medela pump that I use a lot, but I also purchased this manual pump, and it literally just looks like that. I think it was maybe $60, and the reason why I got it is I was going on a trip and leaving Bennett overnight, I think for two nights for the first time and I had to pump while I was on the road. And this was super convenient to be able to just pump, stick this in a bag, and then when we got there, I put it in the freezer. Um, so I really like this and honestly, it has a stronger suction than my electronic pump. I don't know if that's because my other one is older, but I really think that this works really well. I did drink this mother's milk tea from time to time. I wasn't religious about it, but I do feel like it helped with my supply and it tastes really good. I would just put a little bit of honey in it and drink it just like that. The breast pads that I used were the Lansano um, disposable ones. I did try using the washable nursing pads and I heard somebody else say this, I can't remember who, but when I would use those washable pads, the next nursing session when I would take that off, it it's like it would stick to me and that hurt. It would like pull skin off of my nipple. And so I did not use those anymore. These did not stick to me at all. They are very absorbent. Um, and the one thing that I really like about them is if you can see, they have these little tabs you pull. And that way you don't see this little crease under your shirt because that has happened to me before but it flattens out really, really well, and that way you don't have that crease under your shirt. So I love these. I've used a couple of different breast milk bags. I'm not really picky about any of them. These are just the ones I feel like I use the most, and that's just the Lansano. Um, I did use the Medela. I think I used the Target brand. They all work really great. I have a visitor. <gasps> Bennett, look. Where's Bennett? He loves to look at the trees move. He wants me to so bad. <laughs> no, no. I think he wants to nurse right now, actually. I think it's time. How to? Look, he does. He's turning to lay down and tell me he wants to nurse. See, you learn each oh. other. 
duh yeah. the last product i totally forgot to mention which is probably our number one used i know it's our number one used product is our boppy pillow he knows what the boppy pillow is and what it's used for and as soon as he sees it he knows that it's time to nurse um i know that the boppies are normally just used for really really small babies but we still use it from time to time just because it's easy and he loves it i'll link my boppy cover below i think i got it from etsy and i got like a gender neutral one because i wanted to be able to use it for my next baby in case i have a girl i'll link that below i feel like this video is going to be really long my battery is a little low and i think my memory card is running out a little bit so that means i've talked a lot Sorry if this video was long. I'm hoping that at least something I said was helpful to you. I know I talked a lot about the struggles of breastfeeding and there are a lot of struggles, but I will say that it is one of the most amazing things I've ever been able to do and I will definitely do it again. I would definitely go back and do it all over again if I had to. It is such a wonderful thing. Good luck to all of you moms out there. You've got this, you're amazing. You are feeding and nourishing a baby and that is the best job in the whole world. I gotta get off of here because my baby wants to nurse. Thank you so much for watching. We love you guys and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, say bye-bye. Say mwah. Mm.